All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, my name is Chris Baroni. Just wanted to give you guys kind of an update. I know it's been a while um, for some of this, but uh, obviously been pretty busy. Um, but want to make sure that first and foremost, everyone's doing well over the, uh, the the pandemic, which, you know, should be over, I think, by now. It's a little bit uh, drawn out, but <clears throat> needless to say, still practicing the uh, safe measures required of social distancing and pretty much staying at home. So um, that being said, wanted to move on to a few things uh, so that way people have an idea of what's kind of really going on and opposed to, I think there was like 20 or some people that showed up to an odd meeting at 1030 in the morning on a Monday. Um, and that's the, the, the been done by whomever is running the show over on, on the board. That being said, though, um, there is something that is obviously concerning and, and certainly you guys need to know about. Um, which is this election um, that was supposed to go really in March, um, maybe May, if you were going from a year from the time our last election. Um, and it hasn't been done. In fact, I'm not even sure a date's actually been set. Something's been tossed around about August, but this is a clear violation um, of the uh, the rights of the, the association. And oddly enough, the very same people who were whining last year about a, a couple month delay because we had a ton of stuff going on here they are um, taking even longer to get it done and in fact the reasoning behind it is what's concerning because the election rules haven't changed um, since the new ones came out back in 2019 for implementation in 2020 so there really is no excuse for this and in fact I think uh, Harriet Cohen was the one who sent out an email to a bunch of people talking about boards doing the very thing that she's doing along with the the other two um, and using it as an opportunity <laughs> to, uh, you know, maybe stay in power, whatever it is. Um, it's just, it's, it's pretty pathetic. But um, needless to say, uh, that's uh, something that needs to be thought of, I think, as far as, you know, compliance is concerned. Also, um, compliance regarding, you know, reporting, um, to the state, you know, the uh, information that they need hasn't been done. And again, this was one of the things that, you know, you heard a few in the uh, peanut gallery talk about last year, but awfully quiet now. Um, also, as far as the $160,000 a year job that they have been offering for someone to watch doorknobs, um, that's a, you know, a very serious concern. It's, it's a complete and utter waste of money. They have provided no evidence, no proof of anything regarding anybody breaking into anything, stealing anything, or whatever concocted stories that they're telling you about. Um, you need to be aware of it because apparently they're looking at taking another, I don't know, 23 to 25. It depends on, on how badly they want to, uh, not follow the rules regarding taking money out of the, uh, reserve account. Um, word of advice is just because you think you want 25,000 doesn't give you a right to take 25,000 out here. There's no rounding up in the reserve account. You take out exactly what you need, not a penny more or a penny less. Um, clearly you have, you know, amateurs trying to, you know, play on the board and they're playing with, with our money. And I think now they're already got it down to what we had 200 plus thousand. And I think they've already withdrawn like close to, what was it? Like a uh, hundred and close to 100,000, 80,000, something like that. Um, but, and this is just in a few months. Um, there were a few things though that I, I did want to talk about because um, the idea that the uh, board was pushing people to go to the offices um, to do demolition was monumentally stupid. Um, it's not essential. It shouldn't have been done. It violated law and shows a complete and total lack of judgment and leadership on the side of uh, the people who are actually involved in this scheme. Um, it accomplished nothing. Um, it's not gonna get the electrical stuff uh, done any faster. And quite frankly, put a lot of people at risk. Um, and for Michael Allen to go out there and say, well, but even if there is asbestos in there, it'll be 30 years before we hear anything about it. You know, that's pretty stupid shit to say. Um, but typical, I think, for the people who, you know, are kind of trying to, you know, destroy the HOA or handle it, whatever they're doing. But it's it's, it's an, obviously not working. Um, the next thing is, is uh, there was an email, I think, came out something about talking about 
golf course greens and all this other stuff, the, you know, the perfect time to have that done would have been in March, April at the latest. Um, punching the greens now when it should have been done a while back. I mean, we had full staff, so um, the idea that, you know, they couldn't, you know, get it done when they're going to wait till what, <laughs> till it opens. I mean, just, again, it's a, a very poor business decision and um, it's unfortunate because I think it, again, is going to demonstrate just how lazy um, these three individuals are. And that's what you have. You have, you know, very lazy people who are going to hire, you know, and pay an extraordinary amount of money um, to get things done that we weren't having to pay for. Um, and we're finding that out by how often they're having to reach into the reserve account already. And they haven't been, haven't been in there more than, you know, half a year yet. So it's going to be, uh, once that money that we worked really hard to save up for this HOA is gone, um, I know GPL and, and the rest will be happy and, and, you know, people can claim that, oh, they're not, they're doing the, they're doing the job, right? They're, they're going to bring it back down to nothing. Um, and then, uh, as far as, uh, I guess there were some questions with regards to pool maintenance that was brought up. And, um, yeah, I mean, the pool needs to be maintained. Clearly, um, uh, hopefully they kept the same guy that I had there. He was doing a good job, so um, shouldn't be an issue really at all. Um, as far as, like, there's a, apparently some restaurant committee. Again, this is just the, the lazy person's approach to getting it done. Um, the restaurant... Um, and as far as bringing somebody in there, it's going to be a really tough sell because the very people now who ensured it was nearly impossible to get a restaurant in there, um, because of, you know, they're, uh, contacting, uh, certain people when they found out who they were and telling them not to go in there, um, to the organized criminals of our, um, of Westlake Village, Gory Hills, Malibu, Oak Park, um, who have a vested interest in, in that restaurant, um, haven't really learned what's really going to happen and go down yet. So, um, it'll be, it'll be tough, but not impossible. Um, we, you know, came close and we had, you know, somebody, but again, there were people working actively to, uh, to subvert that. Plus, you know, you're looking at trying to bring somebody in there. You got to sign a long-term contract, and let's face it. You know, with the current you know circus of of three people that are trying to you know do whatever they're trying to do, it's not going to give anybody who's going to put their life hard, you know, savings and and uh, you know work into an HOA, um, and that's going to be tough. Especially because, like I said, not only is the instability there, but you've got a lot of problems with regards to people, you know, who are currently on the board that don't know anything about, I mean, they still thought keeping Osteria Horto was a good thing. It's uh, mind boggling, it's weird. Um, that being said, uh, it's kind of interesting because it looks like yeah, there was some talk about the tennis and bringing in a, a couple of people. I'm just like, you know what it is, it's, it, it's you're just circling, you know, the wagons here. And, um, you know, I specifically remember a couple that lives near hole one, you know, creating a lot of havoc over the fact that um, the courts uh, belong to the HOA and we shouldn't have anybody there. And then, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people who agreed with that never even were on the tennis courts. Um, like I said, over 95% of the association doesn't even use the tennis courts. So um, the idea of generating revenue from them was a certain... Um, with certainty, but now if one of the five percent wanted to pay what the going rate would have been, then I think that would have been great, and we could have definitely kept it just the association. Um, outside of that, losing you know five thousand a month or yeah twenty five hundred a month or something, whatever it was, um, is what it is. But that being said, match tough tennis. It isn't the first time they stopped paying their bills, um, and they did it again, but not without. Um, Lord and saying that they were paying their bills, which is now interesting um, because it come to find out that uh, more than likely they hadn't been paying their bills for a while. So, or they were paying Lord, which is uh, probably what was going on. Um, then there is this, uh, the, they talk about these legal actions. And actually, this is kind of uh, 
This is somewhat important because this really shows the ignorance of uh, the, you know, the three clowns in the circus here. First of all, um, there aren't four former employees suing the association. And if there are four, then let us know which lawsuits they are. Of course, they won't because they're, of course, full of shit. Um, there is one lawsuit that was made public, and it was Damien. And Damien, um, and I actually am not going to get too much into this because um, it was Lorden and GNA Partners who um, let him go. So, uh, and it was also Lord Management who was taking care of the time cards and all that stuff, as the records clearly indicate. But because you have the three clowns so closely associated with Lorden, who's been embezzling our money and misappropriating it for so long, um, they've got them to buy into the, you know, the bullshit, so to speak, and get you to believe that somehow there's four employees. Um, no, and then I think the one employee that they were trying to talk about already had his case, you know, thrown out by the uh, California Labor Board, and rightfully so. Um, in fact, I think him and his sister are um, subscribed to this channel, so hello to them. Uh, that being said, the uh, next thing is uh, uniform provider. Again, this is a, a very um, interesting situation because um, the uniform provider that we had was, I believe it was signed by the prior GM, but regardless, the uniforms, as far as I know, were all turned in, and I remember them um, being turned in. So if the idea is, is that they haven't been, um, that would be the claim that someone would have to make, but the idea that it would cost for a couple pairs of slacks and a couple shirts, uh, tens of thousands of dollars, it's a joke, okay? So, um, but because you have three very lazy individuals trying to... Um, manage and you know and govern the board what you're going to find is is that <clears throat> one they haven't really they don't have a clue as to what was going on and they're not because they're lazy going to seek any sort of information on it um they're just simply going to be lazy and probably roll over because that's normally what lazy people do um as opposed to ensuring that it was done. I mean, make no bones about it. I mean, you know, Harriet's definitely way past, you know, her prime and is tired and, and, and probably worn out already. Um, you know, same same with Michael and, and Hal. I mean, it's, they they haven't even began yet. They're not even doing a summer camp yet. <laughs> they don't even, you know, they don't even have the golf course up and running <laughs> yet. I mean, uh, they have absolutely no idea what's to come. Um, and unfortunately, what's not funny about that um, is because of their laziness, it's going to cost the association dearly. Like I was saying, you know, you're going to pay a salary of $160,000 a year for a doorknob watcher. You got to really wonder what's next for them. And, you know, and then if you take a look at what they're paying Lorden, which is well over a hundred thousand a year for doing very little work. I mean, very, very little work. It's, uh, again, uh, you're going to see come to fruition here. Um, and, uh, you know, they may have wished that they had the, the election sooner rather than later. And then there's, uh, something that they mentioned about echo lab is pressing a claim. I'm not sure what pressing a claim means. Um, I think what they're trying to do is hype up a request for what they believe is a payment that should have been made. Again, all of these payments and all this stuff went to, to Lorden. And what Lorden does when they receive these payments is they decide to put them on the portal or they don't. Um, but when you're embezzling and misappropriating money, as Lord Management has been doing with a lot of associations, um, you kind of pick and choose what you put out there and when you're going to pay it and, and all of that good stuff. And, and you know, I've got to tell you, it was something that I had, you know, brought up man, over a year ago. And, uh, got to be really careful because, you know, what they normally try to do is they try to uh, really, you know, get a couple people from the association and then they try to do what they're doing now. I mean, it won't work here. Um, and I've made, you know, mention of it, you know, Lorden as it exists today in another year or two won't be existing in the same form that it is. Um, them, Union Bank, and a few others are going to um, see what I'm talking about when this is uh, all said and done, um, because there's some serious issues with uh, their lack of accounting, 
um, force accounting and a few other things that they've been doing. And believe me, we got some CPAs in this HOA. They know what I'm talking about. So um, that's that. The uh, point of sale system, I mean, hell already just, I mean, oh, horrible. Um, but we'll see who gets to, you know, handle the point of sale, point of sale system here coming up. Uh, but again, when you have a director who knows absolutely nothing about how to run a business um, and knows nothing about running, you know. And when I say, listen, it's okay, like, if you you know, didn't know about how to run a club, but you should know enough to probably consult with your employees and, and figure out what it is that they want. Um, and yeah, and who's going to be the ones actually using it? Because when we went to Easy Links, it was a disaster. I mean, absolute disaster. And Hal signed it up for two years, but, um, you know, being the, the CEO, I was able to get that reduced down to a year and, and then just pay off what little was left. Um, from that system because it was a nightmare. Um, that being said, um, there's a few things that we're talking about employees who uh, uh, new system totally integrated with payroll by an app. Okay, th that that's nothing new. Uh, nothing. <laughs> it wasn't already in place. Um, we'd already done that. In fact, uh, the only difference is um, that I think they're trying to create it as if it's new. Um, but the system that we had in place before um, was a great system. It allowed for, you know, the guys to actually clock in on their phone. It let them know if they didn't take their breaks. Um, let Lord know if they didn't take their breaks. And and also, um, you know, monitor their, their, their time in and out. And they usually, I gave them like a quarter mile radius to where they could, you know, check in or punch in, punch out. Stuff like that. That had been in place since GNA Partners and Lord had completely mishandled um, some of the things going on with regards to time cards and things of that nature. Um, but you'll notice like over time, you, you know, they'll try to shift some of that, that blame somewhere else. And, uh, you know, it's cute and all, but uh, the facts will speak for themselves as the, I think most people realize, um, who actually was handling the day-to-day -day payroll, or normally not the CEO that I'm aware of. But then again, I mean, there were a lot of things I did that, you know, probably most CEOs aren't, you know, willing to do or wouldn't do. Um, but payroll was definitely handled by uh, GNA Partners, Lorden, and then Paychex. So um, as far as being able to, the breaks and all of that stuff, I mean, it's all laughable. I think that uh, anybody who's been at the club and actually, you know, spent more than, you know, the five minutes that maybe the three clowns that were there now did, they would understand and know um, that, of course, uh, they didn't just get breaks, they got more than enough breaks and they got more than enough time for for lunch and uh you know let that be as it may but um that's it just wanted to kind of make sure that you guys were updated on that um <clears throat> we're still waiting to uh for the judge to confirm her tentative um which just seems like you know mere you know protocol at this point that she would given the um 34 page um decision that was you know the decision that she made well the decision that she signed off on that, that like I said I think I've mentioned this before is uh, she didn't write that decision I can promise you that that was that was done by a law clerk or done by the plaintiffs in this case um, who may have given it to the law clerk and then you know had the judge sign off on it but I've read the judge's decisions I've listened to the judge she doesn't talk or write anything like uh, the tentative so um, my guess is Plaintiffs found a way to get the tentative uh, to the law clerk. The law clerk then went ahead and put it in the system, maybe made a few changes here and there to give to the judge, and that's why you would see her initials on the <clears throat> bottom right of the page. But she owns it regardless, right? I mean, she owns that. I mean, that's her signature there for initials. So, um, like I said, I went through it. I gave my 30-some-odd page objections to it. And um, we did finally hear back from uh, Ware, who is or isn't the HOA attorney. We don't even know. And, um, you know, I think he did the right thing. I think he, he stayed away from it, <clears throat> by at least my portion of it, because it was it had been very difficult to, to respond to, um, factually speaking. So, um, but we'll see. Like I said, fully expect that it's going to be a, uh, you know, continuance or an, an affirmation of the tentative. So not expecting anything different there, um, but you can expect a uh, an appeal or right, right after that. So 
Um, that's it. Hopefully you're all staying safe and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you so much.